today is our first full day here in Malaysia. We are in the capital city, Kuala Lumpur. Let's see what this city is all about. Good morning from central Kuala Lumpur. We are in KLCC Park, which is this really awesome green park right in the center of KL. As you can see behind me are the two Petronas Towers, which is an extremely famous landmark here in KL. This park is beautiful and very, very quiet. It is extremely hot today. It's about 35 degrees. So that probably explains why there's not that many people here. <laughs> Our trip to Malaysia was a little bit last minute. So we haven't done as much planning as we normally like to do before we discover a new country. So if you have any recommendations, please comment them down below. That being said, we do have a plan of where we want to go whilst we're in Malaysia. So we're starting here in Kuala Lumpur. We're then making our way down towards Malacca and then back up towards Penang, Langkawi, and then to the other side to the Perhentian Islands, which I'm super excited about because they look awesome. beautiful. I cannot wait for some more sunshine. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to be walking around the city of Kuala Lumpur, taking it all in, eating some food, having some sweet treats as well. Yay! <laughs> and just enjoying the first day in KL. But first, we have to have a coffee. And you guys know, since our last videos in Vietnam, we absolutely love coffee. So let's see what Malaysia has to offer. Mm. On the way to get our coffee, we decided to get another drink. It is so hot, like we said before. It's like 35 degrees, but it's heavy. Like it's it's humid. Anyway, I don't know if this is a Malaysian drink or if it's just something nice and cool that that lady was selling. But basically she said it was quite sour, mint, lemon, loads of ice. It looked so inviting. It's exactly what we need on a hot day like today. Holy guacamole, that's so sweet. Wow! So it's sweet, not sour. Hold on. Let me stir that. A hint of sour. Now it's nice and I stirred it. And this and a bottle of water was only five Malaysian ringgit. So in my books, that's a pretty good deal. Two. Uh, two. Are we able to sit just outside? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Okay. Yes. You guys can order at the counter when you're ready. Thank you. We're now at a place called Fika Coffee Roasters. Now, here in Malaysia, the coffee shops are few and far between, apart from Starbucks and another chain, I think, called Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Yes. It's very hard to find other coffee roasters. I'm not sure if there's a huge coffee scene here like there was in Vietnam, even though Malaysia is on the coffee belt part of the world. So the coffees here are a bit more expensive than we expected, but they do look awesome. We've gone for two vanilla lattes with soy and syrup, so that definitely does add to the cost. The reason this place is a little bit more expensive is because it's one of the more popular brunch coffee spots in Kuala Lumpur according to Google. The reason we chose it today is because of the name. So the name is Fika Coffee Roasters, which in Swedish is like this quintessential perfect word. I'm sure many of you have heard it. Sweden is very popular for the word Fika, which basically just means taking a little moment with your loved ones or your colleagues, or even on a date, like and just having a coffee and a cake. But it's a little bit more than that. It's sort of a mindset. It's a vibe. It's just a nice moment like mm, with coffee which is what we're gonna do now and also the reason I get to choose a coffee place today is because it's my birthday <laughs> but let's try this coffee without further ado I'm really liking Kuala Lumpur so far. And probably Adriana is too. Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. But um, <laughs> like the people have been extremely nice, even though we haven't met that much people yet. But everyone can speak English, which is a bonus for us as tourists. But it also seems like there's a wide variety of people from many different parts of 
you know, areas around Malaysia here. So you can hear some of the Indian languages, some of the Indonesian languages, and also Malay, which is what they mainly speak here, right? Yeah. And I always thank you again. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can say samu samu. Well, you're welcome, was that it? I think it was something like something that. Something like that. We're, <laughs> We're slowly <still> learning. learning. <laughs> We've literally only been here like yeah. one day. <laughs> one of the nice things, here in Kuala Lumpur anyway, I'm not sure what it's like in the rest of Malaysia, but there's traffic lights everywhere. The traffic is so organized. I don't think we've heard any beeping, which is a little bit different to what we're used to, but it's nice and calm and it feels quite safe to cross the streets here because there's lights and there's like a little running green man telling you when to go, which is also very nice. See? I don't even have to look, but I still look, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> On our way from the park earlier towards the coffee place, we saw this uh, kind of bridge walkway thing and we thought it was just to get over one road, but the whole thing <laughs> is so long. We've been walking in it for what feels like five minutes now, yeah. and it's literally bringing us exactly to where we want to be, which is really nice because it's cool in here, there's air conditioning, and there's no traffic or anything because you're just walking above everything. Yeah, and this one other person walking in here, it's really eerie actually. It's quite, I, I, I find it kind of calm because it's just yeah. nice, calm, quiet. But it is kind of like, where, where is everybody? Are we in the wrong place? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we are being super tourists. We've come back to the Petronas Towers. They're just here. And it turns out you can actually go up to that glass walkway that's connecting the two uh, and I really want to do that but now we're on the front of the towers so this fountain is at the front the huge park that we were in I think connects the front and the back yeah. I'm not 100% sure but that being said there's greenery everywhere in Kuala Lumpur I mean it's almost like it's not the capital city because there's so much greenery around and normally capital cities it's just buildings smushed in so it's really, really nice to see. There are skyscrapers pretty much everywhere here, but they all look very modern and they kind of blend in really nice with all the trees. I think the, the trees and the greenery just make this city so much nicer. Yeah. And it just feels cleaner and everything because it's, it's even like modern, fountains clean. here. Yeah, it feels super fresh. It's like a city from the future. Yeah. If, like that's the only way I can explain it. It's, it's really nice. Like, I'm very kind of shocked. I, I didn't know what to expect from KL, but this is way above my expectations. Yeah, same. It's so now. nice. It just, it feels very sort of livable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 100%. I yeah. would live here in a heartbeat. Yeah, we haven't been here that long already. <laughs> oh. Even the, the water here is super clear and clean as well. Usually, you know, fountains like this aren't that clean, but this looks nice. I'd even take a swim in there if I was allowed to. <laughs> so I definitely didn't expect a big shopping mall in here. I thought the Petronas Towers were maybe like office buildings, just with a little bit of a touristic twist, but there's a huge fancy designer shopping mall in here. Actually, it's a mixture of like designer and just regular high street shops. It's really nice. Everything is like shining and glistening at me. I'm like, woo! But we've got one thing in mind. We're going to that walk bridge. That's why it. It makes my legs go funny. We're only on the fourth floor in the mall and my legs are literally going funny and I feel queasy looking down. I'm so afraid of heights and we're going way higher now. So <laughs> let's see how that goes. <laughs> I assume this is the right place, right? We just walked into somewhere. <laughs> I think it's probably the right place, right? This is our old one, right? <laughs> yeah, we sold our old trouble. We, we've done, as we said earlier, pretty much no planning here. We weren't even planning on coming up to this thing. We're not even sure if we're in the right place because it feels like we're just walking through a museum, but maybe that's what this place is, a museum, and then we go up to the top after. We'll see. <laughs> 
that was definitely not the right place. <laughs> we, that was, we never do that, like we never walk in places without checking, but we haven't got internet, um, <laughs> we haven't got a SIM card or anything yet, and this mall didn't have any Wi-Fi, so we were like, oh, I must be this place. So we paid um, 56 ringgits to get in, um, and we were like, oh, that's not too expensive, because we thought it was going to be a little bit more expensive. Turns out we were in a science museum. <laughs> uh, it For was, children. <laughs> it was quite nice, but... Yeah. It was not what we were here for, <laughs> so we went out and now we're going to try to find the actual entrance to the Twin Towers. We can see bridge. them. We can see them. We, I thought we were heading right under them. I was like, it's perfect location. Not enough signs. It's I crazy how dependent on sort of Wi-Fi and uh, internet we are these days because there are no signs to this place. You'd think as a main attraction there would be signs all over the place, but because everyone usually has an internet connection, but we don't. Yeah, yeah. We are high. Really, really, really high up. Ooh. Oh my god, I almost lost my balance. So. At least this one is closed in. This is the perfect layout for today, spending my birthday. <laughs> I'm super happy to be here. I wouldn't have asked for anything else. I'm so excited for this trip. So we're now on the other side. I just walked across. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the Sky Bridge. And this park that you can see just down there is where we were just a few hours ago. When you're down there, the park is huge. Up here, it looks super small. I mean, we are, I think you said 170 something meters high right now. So we're on the 41st floor, um, but we're going to go up in a little bit to the 86th floor. That's going to be high. Yeah. That's another 200 meters up at least, so... Oh. It's always nice to come up to a sort of sky bridge or viewpoints like this in a city, because you can see so far and you can see how diverse all the buildings are as well. Like Over there in front of me, there's loads of smaller, smaller buildings, but then when you look to the left, there's just Skyscrapers, skyscrapers, skyscrapers everywhere. Oh, cool, binoculars. Wow, look how high we are now. Whoa. I literally, I think I'm looking into people's bedrooms. These are hotels. That is so creepy. I can literally see into people's <laughs> bedrooms. <laughs> birthday. I'm just super jet lagged still. <laughs> I need to sleep a little bit more. We didn't expect that tour to take over an hour. Well, it was 45 minutes, but we got to, had to be there 15 minutes early, etc. But it's actually nice to be proper tourists for the day. But now we are actually extremely hungry. So let's go try and find some proper Malaysian food. Hello. Did I get two tickets to Kampang Baro? Over there? Yeah, you press number five. Okay. Two forty for two people. Kuala Lumpur has so many different public transports that go very frequently. We decided to hop on the rapid KL from KLCC to Kampung Baru, which only took a couple of minutes. So we've come two minutes away on the underground and it's like we're in a completely different town. No high-rise buildings, loads of local street food places. We'll definitely find somewhere to eat here. I'm just gonna go get some drinks as well. One grape, one mango. We are at Nasi Lemak Wanjo, which is a restaurant just five minutes away on the underground, or even less than five minutes away. And I've gone for a Nasi Lemak chicken 
and it looks awesome. This was seven Malaysian ringgit and this was six. Look at the size of that mango, mango shake. That is insane. And there's pieces of mango actually on the top. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm so dehydrated and hot today. It's really hot, but that is hitting the spot. Let's try some of this. Grab some of that sauce, some anchovies, chicken and rice. There's also a boiled egg. Mm, quite spicy, salty from the, the anchovies. I don't think I've ever had anchovies before. But it's really tiny little fish. Mm, to me, this tastes a little bit like kimchi, that kind of flavor. But mm. So I've actually gone for a nasi limak with tempeh instead of the chicken. So they have loads of varieties. I don't know if that's specifically this place or all over Malaysia, but basically this one doesn't have any meats, which is perfect. I think normally nasi lemak has anchovies, uh, some sort of protein source, like the chicken that Dylan's having or the tempeh that I'm having, a boiled egg, cucumbers, rice, the sauce, which is spicy. I think it's like a sambal sauce. And then, normally, I've seen it on pictures with peanuts. This one doesn't have any peanuts, so I don't know if that's the common way or the uncommon way to do it. Oh, that's so yummy. Mm. I thought it was gonna taste like artificial grape. It doesn't, it tastes like they've literally just blended loads of grapes, which I don't know if they have. Yeah, they have. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay, no, it tastes like that. It's super yummy. <laughs> mm. That, ooh, that's a bit spicy, that sauce. Really nice though. I think what Dylan was saying about the kimchi is that there's something that's got like a hint of sweet in there. I don't know if it's the sambal or if it's the rice, but something's kind of sweet. So it's got spicy in there. It's got something kind of sweet, salty. I reckon if you had peanuts on here, there would be that extra added crunch, even though the anchovies are nice and crunchy. So you got all the different textures, all the different flavors. And technically you have your, your proteins, your carbs, your fats. This is everything you need. You could just eat this all day, every day and be in tip top shape. <laughs> that was the first time we both had Malaysia's national dish and it was actually really, really nice. So if you're ever in this area, you should come here. But I'm sure they'd be delicious everywhere else as well. Can you smell oh, that? Yeah, I can smell that. Basically, there's a dessert place right across the street that we're gonna try out now because we obviously have to round off the day with some lovely dessert and we can smell it across the street because, yeah, you guessed it, it has durian. So <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> Give it. Oh, they're so small. Some, sen, what's it called? Sen, sendol durian, right? Yeah. Can I get a sendol durian? Uh, just a small size. It's they're so spiky. Yeah, they're definitely smaller than... Oh, this is the uh, the jelly stuff. You see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have durian in our country. <laughs> <laughs> Here also, best on season. If no season, no durian. Okay, okay. Uh, Thank you. Oh, oh. 14. 14. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so we're actually going to have to consume this before we go back on the underground. Because durian is so smelly, there's signs pretty much everywhere in hotels and public transports. You're not allowed it in a lot of areas because it's so smelly. Basically, sendol is a popular Malaysian dessert. I think, and don't quote me on this, I think it's sugar syrup, sugar cane syrup maybe, coconut milk, uh, it's got sort of rice flour jellies, which are those little green, almost wormy looking things. I think I saw him put corn in there. There was also something else that was ground up that Google didn't tell us what it was. So that's a big mystery. And obviously on top, we've got the Big Daddy Durian. Please tell me if I'm eating this wrong, but I'm gonna try to mix it a little bit because otherwise I'm just gonna get straight up syrup, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, you can see it as a squishy. I'm gonna go from the center, I think. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. It's just I got the smell and the taste of the durian straight away and it threw me off balance a little bit because I was expecting it to be super sweet and it's um, quite durian. I'm still getting hints of onion and I haven't even bitten into the durian yet. I'm going to let you try it properly first okay. because I'm a little bit frightened now. Wow, that is a strong taste. 
once I get past the durian, like, you know when you can smell and taste something at the same time? Yeah, I could definitely taste the durian. Okay, I really want to just taste this durian. The yeah. sembal itself, because we don't know what it's actually meant to taste like. It just tastes like durian Just now. tastes like durian right now. Uh, let's take this off. Look at that. This is quite ripe. so creamy. You like it? I don't know. It's weird. It's like, is it nice? Is it not nice? I can't, I can't work it out. I want to try it now. Oh! That is... First it started tasting a little bit like ladies perfume. Then it tasted like roasted something like smoky. I don't know if it's something that I would want to buy often. But I feel like all I can taste from this thing now is durian. No, see, now that tastes better. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's been an awesome first day here in Kuala Lumpur. Way, way, way better than we expected. Make sure you subscribe to our channel because our next video is going to be a super exciting food tour here in Kuala Lumpur. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy the video that's on the screen right now where we were making our way here to Malaysia and we almost missed our flight. <laughs>